So I come through the door. Mayim's there with her friend, and 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 Nick's there. Ted's character's there, and walks in, and he and, he, and I come in. I'm like, hey guys, like, hey Joe, how was school? And I go, whoa, like that, which was the first version of it, right? Mm. And the audience laughed, mm. so a little bit, right? So we did the take again, and I'll never forget this. They were just like, do it again, and I looked at Ted, and Ted literally was like, go for it, like just really go for it. He literally, he literally said, go for it. And I'll never forget that I went for it. And it was that more of that, whoa, thing. And they exploded in laughter. And I had another line. Because it was, who is that? Right? Or something. Right. And I, I was looking at Ted. And literally, Ted, that was one of those times where he was like, wait. Mm. Literally. And I, I, I learned at that moment that I could milk. I, I didn't want to cut my laugh. Mm. So, like, I let it go on. And there was a laugh spread. I mean, they laughed. Mm. And that was the literally beginning of it. <laughs> Our, this is our studio. Yes. And ladies and speaking of studio, Whoa. we have somebody near and dear to my heart in house today. Literally, honestly, one of the greatest dudes ever. Um, yep. I can get you know, to he, that. Yeah, we have had so many amazing moments together. Um, just a bond that really started like when he became like my TV dad. But truly, like I know it, people say this a lot, like, oh, he's like a real father. But honest to God, Ted really was. He He is really one of the greatest people i've ever met um let alone in the industry so without yep. further ado ted was in the house everybody hey! on the brother love pod hey. wow. and happy friday welcome happy to friday. the show we, yep. are we are back ted i'm so glad you're here uh, i'm yeah, this so is happy so to be cool, here man. this is this just great we were just awesome. talking about that right i mean it's just so wild how many years have gone by and ted and i get together for lunch randomly and we have to do it more but um, every time, it's like no time passes. Yeah. You know, it's 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 well. That that's when you know that that's when you know that the, the bond is real. It is right. Like I've got a best friend. Sometimes he's got kids now. Right. We go years, and then it just picks up like no time had passed. That's exactly what it. What that's it a nice is. feeling, isn't it? It's it a is. great yeah. feast. Yeah. yeah. And yep. Ted was, you know, I mean, he was so influential on the show because when we started the Blossom Show, you know, I mean, obviously I had worked, but this was like, you know, I was coming into my teenage years and the whole thing, and. Ted was just such a beacon of like strength. He guided us all. He was surrounding. I mean, you know, it's so crazy to think about it because I thought of him like as such an adult, you know? Yeah. And we were just saying this, but I mean, t Ted was a decade younger than I am wow, now. dude. Playing That's my dad crazy. on the show. <laughs> yes. I mean, I remember for, like, That's it was like, wild. it was like third season or something. He turned 40 on the show. What? Oh, oh, wow. In real life, we had a cake for him on the set and everything. And his wow. 40th birthday. And oh, there's so many stories, and I'll, I'll let Ted talk. But I'll just remember he had because I'm a big car guy. He's only four years older than me now. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. Think about that. Like wow. that is nuts. Yes. Yeah. When Ted oh started this, when 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 Ted started the show, you're 36. Yeah. He was a year older than you, bro. Wow. Yes. Playing the dad <laughs> to all of our. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? He looked so young, but he had such this presence. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That he was able to do it. You yeah, know, yeah. and he was, and it, and the character was a hip dad. He had an earring. He was a musician. Yeah, it yeah. was Super groundbreaking cool. at the at the time. But he had a grand wagon ear because everything is cars in me, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. With the wood siding black, yeah. <laughs> so dope. Mm. By, by the way, those cars are worth a fortune now. Those yeah. V8s are worth a fortune now. And I'll never forget that in 92. Ted's like, I don't have that. In 92, anymore. 93. Thanks for making me he feel He was going to upgrade it. And I was like, wait a minute. Can I help you? Can we help you figure out a car? He was like, I'm sure he was humoring me. But he was like, sure, Joe, you could help me. So we figured it out. And he got the STS Cadillac. Oh, I love with that. With the car. North Star engine. It was this brand new design Cadillac to come out mm. with. This car was unbelievable. And I'll never forget when you drove it on the lot the first day. I think I was more excited than Ted. And as <laughs> he's going through every car because we've we've had such an incredible, you know, yep. story together. I mean, I begged him to direct the pilot of Melissa and Joey. Right. And he did that for us cool. and basically so helped cool. launch that yeah, show. Launch the show. And set amazing. us up for success. And then honestly, Ted, you know, went on to, I mean, he had an amazing career acting and stuff, but he went on to direct everybody. I know. I mean, Spin City, Michael J. Fox. Oh, oh my dude. We talk about Michael on the show all the time. Dude. He's like he's like a beacon when it comes to sitcom yeah. and everything that we've done. <laughs> I yeah. came onto the show as Michael was in his early retirement there. I did all Imagine. the Charlie Sheen episodes. Oh, yeah. But my. Michael came back yes. wow. and we did a bunch of episodes together and mm. he was amazing, as was Charlie. Yeah. Two wow. completely different guys. Dude, Very that, different. I filmed a show next to you guys. I, I, I'm, I know. called It was Tucker. It was like a real quick... It was uh, Katie Seagal, and I think it's when she met oh, yeah. Kurt Sutter on it. and I don't know, but uh, we filmed next to Spin City and Charlie. I remember because Charlie Sheen was walking around, and I was a big Charlie Sheen fan. 
Wow. Yeah, somebody was saying early on, like, what's the difference between the two? And I thought about it for a second, and oh I said, Oh, my gosh. Charlie doesn't scurry. You know how Michael would, mm. like, scurry around and run around and do stuff and, like, always be trying to figure right, it out? And Charlie right. was, like, so much quieter and, like, yeah, let's, we'll figure this out. Like, he was, huh, interesting. it was such a, yes. such a difference of energy, you know? Wow. Um, you, had, you did you did two and a half men too, didn't you? Direct some some of I that. I did, I yep. did. Wow. I mean, Ted's directed everything. I yeah, know. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, he became like he, I mean, literally when he wanted to, he was like the go-to guy. That's why to get him on Melissa and Joey was huge. Was huge, of course. Actually, when we sat down with the network, they were like, "Who should we get to direct this thing?" And I was like, "We got to get Ted Wash." And literally, they turned to me. I'll never forget this. Paul Lee, who was running ABC at the time, was like, "Yeah, yeah we're, we're not going to get Ted Wash." And I was like. He's a British guy. He's like, we're not going to get Ted Walsh. I was like, no, I think we can get him. I'll call him. He's like, he's not going to do it. And I was like, I think he'll do it. I mean, I, come on. Let me, let me, let me try. And wow. we did. And he did you it. Know, this is a huge awesome. favor. You know, it's funny. We just talked about this on a previous episode about how the art of sitcom has been lost. And we want to bring back this thing called nostalgia, which is like the family sitcom, yeah. but not redoing old sitcoms. Do new family sitcoms, but bring back that nostalgia new ideas. from when we were all really in it and really doing it. Because I feel like that was the the real heyday. I feel like it was. that was the moment where you had really quality family. It wasn't like they were preaching to kids or doing this for adults. It was just family. Everybody could get around and watch it. And I feel like it's been lost. Yeah, I kind of have to agree with you. It, mm -hmm. it just seems a little um, superficial these days, you know, and I... I, I, I used to, when I first came in the business in 77, I, I, I mean, out here in 77, and I got on soap. Yeah, he was on soap. Yeah. There was. Uh, wow. With Billy was, Crystal. Oh, and, my gosh. Yes. There were so some cool. older directors that I worked with, okay? <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And they were kind of grumbly, like, ah, oh, this isn't what it used to be. You know, when oh, we did Playhouse 90, we didn't have any run-throughs. We just did the show, and then we wow. presented it. I don't like the way this is going. And I thought to myself, if I ever start to sound like that, <laughs> I think it might be time for me to, to step on out. So I, you know, I, here's what happened to me. I, I basically woke up one morning and I didn't see anything that I wanted to direct. Yeah. And I realized I didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. That crazy. I get it. So, uh, you know, 45 years is enough to be in one business. Well, two. I mean, I was in the same business, but I had a second career. Yep. Wow. So, dude. Yep. Wow. Which is the key, by the way. You guys, you know, this is a great idea. You should really try and follow through on that because, because with the old, nostalgia, I love this, because with the older shows, there was a certain sense of continuous life in the scenes, you know, like mm -hmm. people were going someplace, they were coming from someplace, yes. they were doing yeah, something sure. in the middle of the scene, they were thinking about where they were going, they were thinking about where they'd been, and yes. it built a kind of kinetic energy so... that you could feel mm -hmm. in the 100%. building of the show. And now it just seems a little, like there's so many premises that you kind of have to buy into the you just go i i can't i know i can't i can't make the leap um so true. but then there's some things that i watch that you have to make the leap and you go this is the best thing i've ever yeah, seen yeah. so yeah. i guess it's all in the execution i don't yeah. want to be bagging on any of the current shows i'm just not attracted to them that's yeah. all so yeah um, get it. i don't even know what's on anymore Dude, man. I, get I know I well the know. half hour comedy especially is just i mean i don't even know if they i just don't know what they're doing i mean like one of the things we often say is that when you when you take out the live audience, especially in situational multi camera, you're destroying a vital character that yeah. you absolutely need for energy. You need it if for you know. We would. I mean, I remember. You, I learned how to wait for laughs. You, our characters in particular on Blossom. Yeah. You know, my character was this dolt, right? Who yeah. just didn't understand anything. <laughs> You'd set it up, and, and then Ted would and knock Ted it down. Would and it was the most, great, Ted yeah. would have the deadpan. Wow. I mean, he would do the greatest deadpan. Wow. I remember for me. this. It's and ingrained he in my me, mind. He taught me by watching him wait as the laugh built. And I remember there were times where I would say something, and we were in you know live show, and Ted would literally just be staring at me, and you know the camera couldn't get your face on; it was always at the side. So he would always wink to me like just. Give it a minute. You're you're doing great. Just hang in there. Wait, wait for it. <laughs> yeah. Wait for it. And I and then I would go on. I mean, you know. And I remember. I mean, dude, we had so many moments. I was trying to think about moments. It's hard for me to remember the lines, but there were so many lines. Where I remember one time the scene was. I mean, I had to come to him. You know, I, Joey would always come in and ask his dad advice, and his dad yeah. would realize what a 
fucking idiot this kid is, but he would <laughs> love me, you know? So I'd be like, Dad, you know, can I ask you a rhetorical question? And Ted would be at the piano because, you know, Nick was always writing music. And he, I'll never forget, rhetorical question. Is, so he would, literally, it was the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be, I'd be staring at him. He goes, and the audience would be laughing off of his look. Of course. And he'd go, Joe, um, you know a rhetorical question is one that you know the answer to, right? And I would be like, <laughs> Dad... If I knew the answer to the question, <laughs> why would I be asking it? And Ted was, I'll never forget, because the laugh spread must have been a minute. He was literally oh like God. this. <laughs> and they were laughing and laughing and laughing, and he knew when to break it perfectly, and he went like this. Literally, he was so pretty. He was like, what's your question, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Crazy. Yes! Awesome. I, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but oftentimes it was just because I couldn't remember my next line. Oh, right. so, <laughs> okay, Perfect. Perfect. that's Perfect. what it is. He's like, what I, the hell is it? And I sat up there at the piano. I had all this mm. music. Like first season, I had like oh, one yeah. or two sheets oh, yeah. of music. Yeah. And I would start to write my lines yes. on it, you know? Mm. Yes. And then we kept it all. And by the end of the five-year run, yes. there oh. was this big thing. Thick oh my stack. god! Stack oh, of music. So cool. I could go back and almost like remember was, the episode by oh, looking. That's at, so cool. It was so great. We had an cool. awful lot of fun. We had so much you fun. You were so also, funny. You Joey. had the Donald Duck line, man, which is just so brilliant. Where you know I would come to you and I'd be like, Dad, what is it, Joe? You know, I'm just so upset. Why? I just don't understand why Donald Duck doesn't wear pants. You know, <laughs> and the look. Uh, and uh, he doesn't. He doesn't need. Pants, Joe. He's got feathers. <laughs> and I would be like, oh, and then oh. the greatest line was, write it down this time. <laughs> that, was, that was great, dude. Write it down what this an unbelievable. Time. Like, I've asked a question that. before. Yeah, that's really I didn't great. remember. And he was just, but he did it so great. lovingly. It so good. Yeah. yeah, he had the audience in the literally the palm of his hand most of the time, which yeah. is so good. It was so good. You know, I remember a moment between you where you guys were talking about a beetle. Oh yeah, the dang beetle. The dung, the dung, yeah, the dung yeah. beetle went to the dang store. <laughs> that oh, got my me God. every time. Yeah, the every dung time. beetle dang store thing. Don wrote us something where it was like dung and dang. The oh, dung beetle great. went to the dang store. Oh, it was <laughs> dung and dang. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Great. Yep. Man. Don Rio oh, created we had an blossom. Awful lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. It good was stuff. so good. And they, I remember I've I've told this story before, but I don't know if I've ever told it to you with you. What is it? Where where early on in the run when Joey was like emerging and mm. people were going crazy for him. And the girls were coming out in droves and droves and droves. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came out after my intro, right? Yeah. And and just as he was coming out, somebody, mm -hmm. young girl from somewhere close by in the in the up in the bleachers, threw a pair of underpants. Oh yeah! <laughs> wow. And they landed in the camera aisle, like about ten feet away from us. Oh, and boy. Joe got down there and he was thanking everybody. And, and then I pointed and he looked down and he said, "What is that?" <laughs> and I you said, warrior character, life Joe. imitating art. Yeah, I was about to say. And I said to him, "That's a house at the beach, Joe. <laughs> I think, I think we're gonna have a run here." Oh my gosh, that's wow! Right. What that's a right. moment. That's yeah, right. it was wow, a that's lot of awesome. Fun, and you know what's crazy? Wow. He was so innocent. What? What's that? <laughs> That to is, house at the beach. We're gonna have a run. Oh. To house at the beach. Tom. Oh man, that is you know, genius. honestly, oh, Ted, oh, my Ted's God. perspective on all that, because he so was cool. he was the he was the veteran. He was the seasoned yeah. act. He had the he was the one that had all the gravitas, you know. Yeah. When did you so, start? Se well, you started in 77, right? So I started in oh well, I, I I was in acting school till 75, and then mm. I went to New York. Yeah. Mm. Where did you go to school? You went it was called the Goodman School of Drama then. Goodman it's it's mm. called the Theater School at DePaul now because uh, the Art Institute moved it out. Mm. Um, but I went to New York and I got into a showcase uh, at an off-off Broadway theater in 1970, late in 75. Mm. And it was a play called Columbus by a writer named DeGeldro. And it's a straight play, right? Mm. And the guys that were running the theater decided to make it into a musical. And so they had added a bunch of really wonderful songs. Wow. And wow. they called me up and said, you have a great part. They were so happy. And I said, what's my part? And they said, Queen Isabella. And I said, what? 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 They said, yeah, we've added this. We've added this role to we the got... script. You're going to oh play gosh. Queen Isabella. Oh You're going to sing wow. a song to Columbus. Oh my gosh. Give him the ships. 
and then he's going to give you a big kiss on the lips. And I remember my stepfather was like, he wasn't too happy that I was going to be an actor. And I kept thinking, you know, when I get some success, I'll call him oh my God. and I'll invite him to see what I'm doing. Oh, and my God. This thought, is funny. Not this show. <laughs> not this one. Oh, my That's hilarious. God. And it, I, Well, it actually taught me about beer burns, you know, like because this guy was a big. Oh, my gosh. Big strapping dude from Texas. And he used to grab me. And I mean, he would plant one on me. Oh, gosh. And he'd mush it all around. Oh. And if he let me go, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh. There you go, Wasi. What do you think about that, baby? <laughs> How many shows oh at night did you have oh to do? Oh, yeah. well, I think we only did a couple of weeks, but uh, we wow. had a great time. And then, then wow. I got cast as wow. uh, the male understudy to all the male roles, particularly Danny Zuko in the Broadway, the original Broadway production of Grease wow. in wow. 1976. Oh my. And I played the role Goodness. for quite a bunch of performances. Yeah. Wow. Well, Ted can really sing. And then I right. came out here. And he here, can dance. Yep. I mean, do all Came that. out here in 77 to wow. see what was what. Ted can and, do it uh, all. He can sing and yeah. dance. Yeah, he's that that stuff. Uh, you know, everyone had to do that. I mean, that, yeah, we well, all had yeah. to do that. I had to yeah, do that. Back in the day. You had you to know, do everything. You had to know how to do it. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't sure. just, you couldn't come in and just be interesting for a moment. Or... It was interesting. It was like you wanted to, you wanted to get trained. I mean, our our... Our generation, my generation and yours, yes. we wanted to get trained, you know, exactly. rather than just show up and go, hey, here I am and yep. learn on the job. We yep. wanted to be able to walk in and get it. Exactly. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I still think that that's, I mean, the business is different now, but I think that was certainly one of the explanations as to why you did so well at an early age and I did that well, you know, is yep. that we were trained. We knew what we were doing. We could walk yeah. in and do it. So, 100%. and you guys too. And there you was, guys knew. Yeah. And there was, an, there was an accountability, and we talk about it all the time. Like, you were told. I mean, I remember as a young kid working with, you know, Hal Cooper on Give Me a Break, right? Yeah. And, I mean, these guys, Hal Cooper directed the Dick Van Dyke show. And, the, you know, like, there was no fooling around. Like, yeah. even though I was five or six, like, no. I had to be on my game. And he there was, was an accountability. He, he was one of those guys, by the way. He was? Was he? Yes. <laughs> he, no, he was. was. Hal Cooper. Out. Oh, God. He, he was, was amazing, but he, he did Playhouse 90. They yeah. they did, the director did everything then. Hmm. Yes. Yes. So anyway, he would, he would smoke his cigars. Oh, Hal yeah. Cooper on set. On I have set. I have one I have one memory of. Did you run? Give yeah, me a break. They I added that the very last season to that show. I remember. Oh, yeah. And uh, and it was but boy, we worked with all of them. You know, yep. all those guys, and yeah. they there was such an accountability. Like if you didn't oh, nail yeah. it, it was gone. And they said that. Listen. Oh yeah. Nail this. No, or it was, it's out. It was real. And I you remember. know, I love that. Like you could say it's harsh, but it was like. It was. It really taught me great training, so that when I was able to work with people, I wanted, like you said, I I sought out the training, I, I I got the training, and then I wanted to learn more, and I learned on the fly, and I was able to soak up stuff from everybody, you know, yeah. you included. I mean, yeah. the yeah. deadpan stuff I brought later in life. I brought the deadpan right. to Brotherly Love, which is the show I did with these guys. I brought it to Melissa and Joey. I mean, it was so cool working with him on that because I'm sure. it was it was my show, so cool. right? Well, and with with Melissa and it, it was a whole different thing. We I was EPing it, we were doing our thing. It was a collaborative effort and to have Ted there as we found that the voice awesome. of that show, yeah. which is what you do in the pilot. It was and to have his have his just his expertise just kind of keep everybody calm and you know everyone's all nervous, right? Network's nervous, everyone's nervous. And Ted was such yeah. a voice of just reason and calm and he was like, "No, no, it's going to be great. This scene's going to work perfect." And they would be like, "Okay, you know, yeah. and it took all the pressure off of us so that we could be funny because Ted took all the blowback. And from thank God you made it work, man. Because yeah. I, I made promises out there. You I, know. Know what I'm <laughs> I know. I know. I know. He did. And the pilot was great. And he went yeah. on, you know, Ted yeah, directed as many great. as, you know, he could for us. But I mean, it was awesome. It was that really was a awesome. lot of fun. It was really fun. It was so much fun. Yeah. Your mom that, must be so proud of all three of you. Man. She is. You guys have all my done mom so loves well. you. Yeah. I know. She was, she was bummed back. She's not here. My love. She was bummed. She always says that. That she was not going to see Ted. I'm Ted. No, I know. Yeah, everybody loves Ted. I Literally know. everybody. I know. And what what can't you like about this guy? He's a freaking super stud and doesn't uh, age. I know. You know that? I know. I mean, really, Ted, you don't. <laughs> it's awesome. I love that. Wow. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought that was just like a reference. Uh, 71 no. now, man. He's 71 years 71. old. What the? Wow. wow How is that possible? Ted? I don't know, man. <clears throat> wow. Ted, it's weird. Gen perhaps a genetic winner is all Well, it's a say. genetic winner for it's sure. It's like wow. I was going to say about the whole deadpan thing, and I didn't invent it, you know? No, I, just, I know. I just carried it along 
And I'm glad that now it's in somebody but else's hands. You head. executed it to perfection. Oh, it's one thanks. thing to try to carry it along. Yeah. It's another thing to do it. I mean, and you did it. You know, well, Carson did it in Late Night. Johnny Carson was the king of oh, deadpan yeah, in Late yeah, Night. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, you know, deadpan has been a great part of comedy, but... Ted's delivery of it was no, oh my absolutely. gosh! I mean, he would it would take because he had several versions of the deadpan. So you'd mm -hmm. get it where he just he'd be looking at you flat on, and then would freeze, and you wouldn't know it was deadpan until halfway through the look, and then he <laughs> hadn't moved or blinked an eye. But then there'd be those ones where he'd look up from his keep from his piano, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be one eyebrow, and it'd be just there were so many different looks. I the mean, iterations of it. Oh, the iterations that was a of very it. good ride, wasn't it? It was a great ride. Yeah. It was a great ride. Yeah. No, and then and then you were directing us on Blossom. That's so like cool. he was directing us on the show. Yeah. I mean, it was really, yeah, it was cool. I man. was trying to get directing jobs before Blossoms, wow. you know. And and Paul Paul Witt and Tony Thomas, who ran Soap, were mm. doing Blossom with Don Rio. Got it right. And I got the word that they wanted me to play Nick, and yep. I I said ah, I don't want to be an actor anymore. Tell him, tell him no. <laughs> And then Tony calls me up and he's like, ah, oh, he's a friend of mine, very good friend right. of mine. And we play golf. He's like, oh, what the F, man? Like, you can't just say no to me. <laughs> you have to come in here. You have to come in here. Tony. Tony. So I go in Gusto. and I'm sitting there yeah, with yeah. the three of them. And they're going, uh, Tony's like, what's the problem, man? Like, uh, play the part. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't want to. He's like, why? I go, I want to be a director. And Tony and Paul and Don all started laughing. <laughs> and I didn't know, what, I didn't know what the joke was, you man. Can, what, I'm sitting there, and they are just laughing, and I go, what? "Okay, <laughs> what is it? What is and it?" And Tony goes, "Oh man, you're so funny. Play the part. We'll let you direct the show." And I was like, "You will?" And he said, "Yeah." So of course, early on, they Jeez. gave me an episode or two, thinking, "Wow, I'd do it, right?" And I'd be like, satisfied. A, a lot of yes, a lot of people who do it and go. Woo, okay, well, look, I may do that again in the future, but right. uh, yeah. I'll go back you know, to acting. Where's my I'll, I'll, shot? Yeah. 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 Can I go back to my trailer? Yeah. Can I be in my trailer again <laughs> yeah. and not have to yeah. be out here? Yeah. Yeah. Lunch, I'll go home at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll call exactly. it that's right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and every time they gave me some more, it just seemed cool. to open up a sleeping lobe in my brain that. Very cool. That uh, I had a great time. It was it was so much fun, and it was great to be with you on Melissa and Joe. It was such a sweet show. That was such a, good, a show. good show. It was. Man. I don't know if show business has changed more than in these last ten years. It has. It's so crazy. So much. Isn't it crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's just. It's, it's so cool change. that you guys found yeah. this to yeah, do. Yeah. This has been. This is just awesome for you. Yeah. yeah. This was birthed out of the uh, uh, COVID and yep. uh, and the the shutdown, and and we were coming off a time when. We were all really in our very different directions, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were just trying to figure out how we could come back together. And this brought us back together and in such a cool way, too, because, I don't know, it really is just us sitting down kind of like at lunch. And we yeah. now have this weekly schedule where no matter what our lives are doing, we have to get together. Yeah. And it's it's really been it's really been very yeah, cool. We, we've been, we were blessed, so blessed when we were young to have that built into our life. Yeah. Being able to spend the time yeah, together, even like outside of just family time, like the work and all that, that was just, that was family time. Uh, when people ask me, what do I do for fun? It's, I just work because that's, <laughs> that's all I do. Yeah. I don't do anything for fun. I'm <clears throat> trying to figure out how to work. Um, yeah, it's true. But uh, so what, I'm really grateful that this is has cemented that, that time to spend together. Mm -hmm. um, and and allows us to you know have that conversation and scratch that itch and and get and to that, catch up with, and with great actually, friends, that's, that's man. What I was just about to say, wow, yeah, I, get a chance to really Dude. really catch up to with people that we love and and it's been it's been awesome. Well, you guys were both on Blossom, which is that's so wild right? because you guys each played versions of my character at younger ages. Oh, yeah, which is so weird. Yeah, I know. There's actually footage out there, believe it or not, of an episode that you directed that Matt was playing me and I was coaching, and it exists because I've been sent it on Instagram yeah. several several times. Where I'm coaching Matt how to say whoa, and <laughs> you you hear you in the background yep. say, "Get in there and show him how to do it." Yep, I swear to God, really? And yes, and I had a meltdown. And I had like a nervous meltdown where I was trying to live up to that to a whoa, and I was like, I couldn't do it. And I, it's the sweetest I thing froze, ever. You know? it's the sweetest thing ever. You see your body, you're standing right there, and I'm going, and you're like, "Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead." So I'm like, "All right," it's kind of like, and it's great because the two of us are brothers, totally out of the moment, working. You know, someone must have been filming that because yeah. it wasn't on how camera. Did, I know. How did that get filmed? That's I have no so idea. Did we have those kind of phones back I, we then? We didn't, but there might have been a B-roll from seven. either Entertainment Tonight oh, or somebody that was, was seeing there. Matt on the show. Or I don't know what it was, but something maybe because you were directing and Matt was on the show and they just wanted to, I don't know. But um, it's there. It lives. If I find it, I'll send it to you. It's you? amazing. Yes. Like yeah, it's and really and cool. I'm going like, it's a, whoa. And Matt would go, whoa. He'd be like, 
like, it, it's a, whoa. And he'd be like, whoa. Like, One more time. I swear to God. Yeah. And then he did it, and you were like, all right, we're, we're good. We're, let's good. get that. Yeah. Roll it. Yeah. The yes. birth of woe. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I tell this story so much because I'll never forget. People ask me all the time, like, where did that come from? And specifically, it was written in the script. It was before social media, so we didn't know, you know, what that was going to be. And I'll never forget that, you know, everybody wanted me, Tony and Don wanted me to say it was written like Keanu Reeves, like, whoa, like Spicoli, like, whoa, like that. And I remember we got to the live audience show and it didn't work, right? Nobody was laughing. And we tried a couple of times. It wasn't laughing. And I don't know if you remember this. Obviously, it was my line, so I remember this. But Don came up to us and, you know, um... He said, listen, Joe, uh, we got to um, we got to figure it out. You know, I was like, I don't know what to do with it. You know, because I was a kid. I was 13. I said, like, I don't know what to do with this. And he was like, yeah, you know what? Just don't think about anything we told you. Just try to come up with something. And uh, if it doesn't work, we'll we'll throw in something else. You know, because they, they, we say this all the time. You would be doing a scene. It was so cool to have a incredible, you know, group of writers on the side that we throw in lines. And if they didn't work, that's why the live audience is so important. Yeah. Because if if something wasn't working, even if the writers were laughing at their own lines all week, which wasn't a shock because they always did that. You know, oh, oh, great joke. You wrote that one. Uh, you know, <laughs> so remember, true. I always say, remember Jonathan Prince? He'd always laugh. And I love Jonathan Prince, but he'd always laugh. The most at his lines. Yes. If it was his line, he was on the floor. We'd have a laugh spread for two minutes and a producer runs, ah, he's killing me. It's like, you wrote that line. Um, but anyway, <laughs> do you remember there was, a, sorry to interrupt you, there was yeah. one guy who had a very distinct laugh. Uh, yes, it was, um, yeah, it was, um, what's his face? You one of our writers. writers. Yeah. It was like a high, like, woo -hoo! Oh, no, 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 no. You're talking about, no, no, no. That was one of the directors we had. That was oh, Gil Younger. Yes. Who directed a few of our episodes later in the show. And he had his real laugh was, oh, yes. Remember that? When he God, left the, oh. Right. I, I remember hearing it. And wait I remember hearing it on the show and I was watching going, wait, that's, that's, I know. that's And I guy. love Gil, not to digress, but I love Gil so much. And Gil went on to do great things. You know, he directed 10 Things I Hate About Terrific You. Terrific director. Terrific. Yeah. But it was so funny because- because during certain run-throughs, his laugh was so loud. Yes, I remember. There were times where Ted would be like this. We would be in a scene, and would, they'd be like, hey, Gil. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're yeah. still trying to find it. Can we have a minute? <laughs> yes, Ted. It was so great. Because they were both great directors, and yeah. Ted wasn't directing that week. And, oh, it was so brilliant. But anyway, so 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 he said, we're going to cut the low line if you can't do it the right, the right way. You know, just find something to make him laugh. And I remember you were in the scene with me. And I don't know if you remember this. And I and I, I said, I don't know what to do. And you were like, just don't think about it. Just literally don't think about it. You walk in. The girl's here. It's Mime's friend. She's beautiful. Uh, just think about whatever comes to mind. Just honestly, you're shocked, right? You're just shocked that somebody this beautiful is in your house. <laughs> I'll never that. forget it. Great note. I'll never just forget it. Just shocked. Yes. So I come through the door. Mayim's there with her friend, and 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 Nick's there. Ted's character's there, and walks in, and he and, he, and I come in. I'm like, hey guys, like, hey Joe, how was school? And I go. Whoa! Like that, which was the first version of it, right? Mm. And the audience laughed. Mm. So a little bit, right? So we did the take again, and I'll never forget this. They were just like, do it again. And I looked at Ted, and Ted literally was like, go for it. Like, just really go for it, you know? Shmi's the snorer of, <sighs> wow, it's, it's amazing snoring. bad today. Yeah, but it's, he literally, he literally said, go for it. And I'll never forget that I went for it, and it was that more of that, whoa, thing. And they exploded in laughter, and I had another line, because it was who is that, right, or something. Right. And I, I was looking at Ted, and literally Ted, that was one of those times where he was like, wait, mm. literally. And I, I, I learned at that moment that I could milk, I, I didn't want to cut my laugh. Mm. So like I let it go on, and there was a laugh spread. I mean, they laughed, mm. and that was the literally beginning of it. Wow. And Super the next cool. week, they wrote another one in. And it gave me another situation. They wrote another one. And then we were always like four or five weeks behind or three, four to four weeks behind the air shows. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until later that year when we started going out right. and we started doing those autograph signing stuff and people started to explode with the, I even knew other people knew about it because there was no way to know. You know, there was no, there was no social media. It, today it would have been instant people if that were, worked. People would scream whoa all the time across, even like crossing the street and stuff. Still like, to oh, this I, day. I, I, rem I remember I like. I will say though, but the only other issue with that is Joe, uh, he now holds for a laugh spread in his normal day conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and the laughs aren't that. always there, you I know? Because it's so like, true. Huh? Okay. Huh? But I remember being me. like a, a teenager and like uh, walking around and getting screamed whoa at him. I'm like, it isn't me. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I know. No, it really was. I dated this uh, woman uh, many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And she had done a commercial in New York that was, her line to the friend was, 
I am your friend. That's why I can tell you, you have bad breath. Right? <laughs> Wait, that was her commercial it was, line? It was, it was a big, like, toothpaste thing, right? Gotcha. Oh, that's funny. And she said for five years after that, people be driving down the street and see her and go, bad breath! Oh, hey, oh bad my breath! No. Oh, my. Isn't it amazing? And she was just like, oh, my God. Yeah, isn't it amazing? You know, like it, you would never think that. Never, but wow. it, it was a commercial that stuck. Everybody kind of remembered it. You know, wow. commercials used to do that. They still sort of do it, but not like Some. they used to. Because How cool that you invented that, though, man. You invented it. Well, I mean, you it was you know, it, it was just only because it. of the failure the way I was doing it the first time. So I failed, and uh, the, but I remember them telling me, you know what? Why I remember Spicoli. Which was uh, Sean no, Penn's cat, right? Sean Penn's cat. Right. Yeah. I had never seen that movie, right? Yeah. I didn't see that movie. I didn't know anything about that movie, right? And Fast Times. Fast Times. Fast times. That was yeah. way. That was before me, and it was very edgy, R-rated, right? Yeah. So, so I couldn't have seen that movie. Right. And I remember you guys explaining that to me. It, it, actually, when they gave me the note, actually, Ted explained who that character was. I was, he was like, it's a movie. Because you were always telling me about movies. Oh, he told me about Stripes, which was, did you ever see that movie? Oh, I know. Bill yes. Murray? Yes, yes. Okay. Of course. Of course. Uh, he would come in. Talk about, we always quote lines here. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the famous lines from that one is Bill Murray. You know, these are these degenerates that went yes. in to join yeah. the army, right? Yeah. And they go in there like, yeah. you know, sir, we're here to sign up for the draft. And he's like, sir, there hasn't been a draft in 40 years. And talk about deadpan. And Bill Murray was standing looking at him and he's like, it was one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So you would do slap shot. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, slap Ted, shot. So I didn't know about any of these movies. Gotcha. Ted ex introduced me to all of these movies. Got literally it. all of these movies. Mm -hmm. But he was telling me about Sean Penn and Spicoli. And and there was no way to really look it up. Because we didn't have social media. You couldn't Google it and find right, a, right, a shot right, of right. that. You couldn't YouTube it. No, no, right. you couldn't. Yeah. So he was telling me. He was like, it's like a surfer guy. He's like, oh, hey, whoa, what's going on? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. So that's why I was like, whoa. Because I didn't know what, what to do. And it wasn't working. Yeah. Well, Ted but he set the validated bar for cool. So I mean, much. Really, because I remember, even as I was a little kid. I remember you coming to the set? Yeah, you were the coolest dude ever. Dude. Especially because my older brothers thought you were the coolest dude ever. So I really <laughs> thought, you know what I mean? Like Ted, had, were... Ted had, I can do Ted's walk. Yeah. If we weren't in a studio, he's I'd do it. the coolest dude. But Ted's walk, he's a trained dancer, right? Right. So he'd walk and he'd have this perfect posture, right? Mm -hmm. And he'd walk in and his feet were slightly like this. <laughs> yes, yes. And he would walk like that. He had this grace about him and he'd mm -hmm. come up and he'd have his hands, he'd point his fingers like this, right? Mm -hmm. And he'd come over, we'd always meet at the craft service table. He taught me how to skin a donut, which is which is which is great. He says, you know, Joe, when you get to be old like me, you can't eat a lot of donuts like you're eating. I just eat donut tops. He was like, what? He's like, my favorite part, chocolate donut. Look at this. And he'd take the donut. We had these big donuts. Yeah, okay. I remember they were probably oh, like man. a palm, oh a palm gosh, full dude, donut. I remember those giant chocolate donuts, icing. Yeah. And he'd go like this. Here's how you do it. Ready? Watch this. There was a big trash can here. You go. I swear to God, he'd go. Uh, he take the entire top <laughs> of the donut with all the icing. That's it. Okay. Uh, he put it in his mouth. He goes, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he take the rest of it. He go, fakoom. <laughs> Throw the rest of it out. Brilliant. It's brilliant. That's how you do it. Yeah. I will Am never. Am I red right now? Yeah. I will oh, never oh, forget. Yeah. Said that's how you skin a donut. <laughs> Did it every day. That's so good. Yeah. Wow. Whenever you had donuts, that's uh, how he'd eat it. Was so great passing these things along, dude. <laughs> oh, so good. It my was legacy. So, yeah, it was so oh, I could good. Skin. I oh. hope that's on my tombstone. Oh, donut skinner. Donut skinner, <laughs> dude. Boy, he would he come skin in. He'd take off his. He'd have oh, all these. Oh, he'd be. He'd come in with these Armani jackets, yeah. leather jackets. He'd come in. I'd be like, oh, he's nice. Oh yeah, you like this? this is nice. This is a. This is a this is a good piece. This is a good piece. <laughs> and he'd lay this on the back of his, on his chair and he'd have this yeah. elegance and he he'd have these great, like, oh man, he had these silk shirts that you know very popular. And yeah. he would put these, oh my god, these gorgeous Armani shirts. And yeah, remember that with your hush puppies, your your your, yep. your suede loafers, and then you went to the Todd's. Anyway, his style was so I yeah. loved it. I tried to draft it, but I was like 15, so I looked like an idiot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going out. I would go out because I've always loved clothes and stuff. And I would go out with my mom and stuff. And I'd be shopping. I'd be like, I love this shirt. She'd be like, What are you, 40? You're not getting this shirt. I, like, I love this shirt. Like, You're not getting this shirt. Getting this shirt. I was like, I don't want this shirt with all the pockets. You're a little kid. She's like, You are a little kid. You're not dressing like Ted. You're not, you're not doing it. But Ted would always, always do that. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty, it was really like Im impactful, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize, but it was super impactful to me. That's why I love you so much. It's awesome. I love you, Joe. I know. And that's why, I don't know. I, you know, it's so funny because people ask me, they're always like, um, you know, is this Blossom thing going to happen? And all this chatter about Blossom. And, oh, yeah. You know, it's so funny because the, p people are, I mean, they're literally my, you know, we all have our little teams or whatever, but, but our, uh, like, you know, managers and agents and everything. 
just even like two days ago, like literally like the, the, the appetite is very, you know, um, you know, well, like it, we were saying, it's very strong nostalgia, you know, I know. That everybody, I think, you know, the, the world is, um, it's a crazy place. And I think it people is. are just desperately trying to, to find that, that little warm spot and yeah. nostalgia, especially for now that generation, that is, that is what's in play right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it'd be, I think it'd be super cool. I think it's a great idea because it's one of those shows where <laughs> it was, it was a massive hit, but but it it could have another life. I think so, certain shows I don't think could. I think this one could, especially with how every one of you guys have gone on. You know, the the, the main pieces have gone on to continue, and everybody yeah. still knows who they are. Right. You know, right? That that's that's super cool. It's just about finding the right voice. You know, we've talked about it. I I don't know whether they ever will, but it's, but it's hard. And then we also talk about man. You know, then bringing old things back and trying to redo tough. them. How do you do that? Tough. That's that's a tough. Well, there's been an awful lot of that, hasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the tank. ones that stick stick. The yep. ones that don't, they just kind of fall away. Yeah, so you you find out if there really is that appetite for it. Yeah, you know? that's true. Yeah. But if you bring it back, you definitely want to bring it back, you know, the way it was or reflecting the emotional kind of family I content as the way it was. So it's it's somewhat, you know, oh, yeah, that's that show. I yeah. 100% um, agree with you. I, 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 I feel like... If we were to do it, it'd be great to see these characters at this point in their lives. I mean, it'd be really interesting to see where Nick went and what happened, you know? And 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 honestly, what happened to Joey Russo? Like, what the hell did this guy do? Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, he went to play baseball, right? Right. And then we didn't really, that was kind of the end. He went, he, yep. he made it to the to the minor leagues and was going to be a baseball player. It'd be fun. You draw a thread through what everybody was. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. exactly. and where they are now. But I feel like because um, we all know the art form and because... You know, half hour comedy is so hard to do and they're still trying. I mean, John Cryer's got a new show now, you know, and they're they're still trying and it's just we all know how to do it. So it'd be very rare to get all of us who know how to do it into that art form. I mean, especially with your expertise and for us to really do that, we could show them how to do it only if we do it, like you said, in the iteration that it was that it was birthed out of. And, you know, with obviously with upgrades, but that's what it'd be if you veer too far away from that yeah. i feel like we expect people to tune in it's like going to an aerosmith concert and we're going yeah we're not doing uh dude looks like a lady what what i 100 percent agree with you i just paid 1500 for this ticket you know and sing I, that song and I, we're doing our new acoustic stuff no <laughs> no it's so true and i and i think that again just saying that about bands i totally agree and the bands that remember that those songs are what the fans come for are the ones that i feel like have are yes. able to tour for a very long yes. time because even though they're like, oh, I'm sick of playing Dude, a song, some, maybe. Some bands tour one song for a lifetime. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, of course. And it, and it works. Rick Astley's had two songs. He tours them, been touring them for 35 years. Together forever. It's got, you know what I, you know, I always say, this, especially about sitcom, you got to bring everybody back into that living room set. That's yes, you do. like the key. Yep. It's like, or whatever that iconic web well, is the kitchen or the living room, but you got to have that feel. You're oh, going to yeah. have that, that family would be so again. Cool. Oh, yeah. To rebuild that's your guys' living room set yes. and to start the, like you're selling the house or something's going like that. That's How cool would that be? Such a fun place to start. Yeah. You got to bring them back into the heart of it. Whatever, whatever it was. Absolutely. You was living got room, it. kitchen. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, you that's know, it. look, I'm down with it. We'll see I what know. happens. Uh, this is what's amazing. No. I talked to Ted. Because see, Ted's like, that's the holy grail, right? You know, know, like when you walked in there in, in, in Indiana Jones and Last Crusade and remember when the night he says, you have chosen wisely. Like, yeah. if Ted doesn't do it, it doesn't work, yep, right? I agree. But Ted's oh. into it. So we, like- We need Mayim, we, we need well, you. And but I know Mayim's into it. Mike she's been Jenna. all over the place yeah. saying like, I'm down to do it. We've had Jenna on the pod. She's willing to do it. Mike's going to come on the pod at some point soon. Yeah. Michael Stoyanov, who yeah. played my brother. Yep. Um, and uh, he's down. So it's like, but I mean, we're down. Yeah. We just if, have to. If all you guys are, are, are. We're down. Are open to the idea. Then I feel like that that has to happen. It just has to. I mean, it's I feel like. Cool. It, well, they've done just about everything else now, I haven't know. they? They have. They, have. Goodness. they really have. Yeah. And like, to your point, they've destroyed a lot of it. Like brought it back and just massacred it. Well, again, and I feel like we would. I feel like we'd have a really good shot to not do that. I think we have a shot to not do it if we really put our minds in the right spot and, and, and think about the fans. You have to think about the fans. That's the key. It's not just about us. It's about the fans, you know? Yeah, Gotta give them something that they want. They certainly have to be a consideration, but you know, in the creative process, if you're thinking about the fans too much, it's true. You know, it's true. you're gonna start making decisions that aren't really of the essence of what your vision mm -hmm. is, you know? That's true. So, um, it's true. Anyway. Yep. 
Hey, I hope you guys are good neighbors. I got friends that live around here. I haven't heard any. Uh... Oh boy, not it's in so a funny. long time. I, yeah. I, 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 at I'll one t- point, they tried to evict us from the yes. neighborhood. <laughs> they did, but that was like fifteen 100% years. One hundred percent true. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, did you see who's moving in down yeah. there? Yeah. Well, that, that was like twenty years ago. Here's Here's what, let me tell you this story. This is actually a really long funny story. Time ago. I um about to get nuts around here. I I I I moved in here rather young. I was about nineteen and a half, and but I was a very quiet recluse. Nobody knew I was in the neighborhood. Matt's very Howard Hughes esque. I literally, he's in jars. I didn't pees have in parties. buckets all around his room. <laughs> I didn't have <laughs> parties. What? He pees in buckets like Howard Hughes. You know, yeah, are you wearing the Kleenex boxes <laughs> on your feet and <laughs> shuffling her? You don't mean that Howard Hughes. <laughs> no, we don't know. You, you don't mean know. the good Howard yeah, Hughes? Yeah, who grew his nails real long. No, you know, I was, I, I'm, I was, I'm an animal guy. I, I, I didn't want people like I didn't even have gardeners because of the, the, the noise that would freak out my animals and things. Very quiet. Nobody knew I was here. Flash forward eight, nine years later, Andy moves in with me. Oh, God. Start throwing <laughs> crazy parties. Yeah. The neighborhood erupted. They thought I had just moved into the neighborhood. I'm not kidding. A decade later, they thought these two young guys moved in the neighborhood. I'm not kidding. This lady who now doesn't live here anymore next to me had a petition out to get all the neighbors signed to get us evicted out of the neighborhood. That is true. 100% yes, of the time. It's true. But now they've Andy, the bringer of chaos. Yeah, he yeah. was the bringer Thank of chaos. Thank you, Andy. He still is. The broker. Andy, he would literally, you, he was like oh, out of a movie Andy's in his so robe happy. with an amp and his electric guitar at like four o'clock in the morning. Wow. You know, like, I mean, literally I don't that do that anymore. I'm, now I'm in bed by nine. Yes, now he's a, he's a much more mature man. But, at, yeah. but when he was 18 yeah, to like sure, 23, there was, a, there was, there was some wild, where I had wild pool parties. <laughs> loud we, parties. I mean, we need you, brother. We, know, <laughs> we need the chaos, man. Yeah, we I, really do. It was. It was. A, it was. It was a it was a fun moment for me too because I had never oh, experienced boy. any of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the neighborhood hated it. Andy drug uh, us both into that. I don't know the little brother just he was the one. He was like the catalyst. Yep. Come on, my big bros are coming out with me tonight. Yeah, like, it's true. This is weird. This guy is he's like, well, what are we doing here, man? I'd be like, what are we doing here? I know. He'd be like, oh, but come on, guys, you know. So oh, true. God. Um, you know, but I, now I hope I hope that they uh, they uh, they they you know don't hate us. At least we don't. We, well, luckily we I think we've lost like the neighbors on either sides have moved. We've yeah, out. We've outlasted That's them. That's another way to so, get it done, yeah. isn't it? So we've just, yeah, they've moved. It's true. They so gave up on getting you out, exactly. so they just <laughs> <laughs> they're never moving. We're out of here. You guys, home. football fans, who you? Yeah. Who you? Oh. Uh, how crazy would it be to have two brothers as head coaches win the national title in the Super Bowl? And I, wouldn't that know. be wild? Wouldn't that be phenomenal? That'd be incredible. It'd be how, so cool. I mean, the Harbaugh brothers. Yeah. The convergence is so like. Wild. How often? When is this ever going to come around? That's uh, a hell of a family it's, dinner conversation, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Especially because, it. especially because he's probably going to leave Michigan and uh, most likely and take an NFL job again. I, would I think imagine. so. They're talking They're about it. He's been linked it. to the Chargers. Chargers. Yeah. yeah. He's having another wow. dinner, I guess, this yep. week. Having yeah. another, another dinner. Yeah. Yes. It's a great time of year for football. It oh, is, isn't it? Oh, oh, I love favorite. it. So excited. It favorite. is. It's a great it. time. I faked I had a bad back last weekend so I could lay in bed and watch another <laughs> Yeah! Oh, my back's <laughs> out, hon. Oh, oh, I'm not going to be able to. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Things, uh, yeah. I, in fact, I, I can't do anything except just lay here. Yeah. I had I had some I had some work <laughs> that tried to switch some days uh-huh. to one of them. And I was like, oh, no, I'm already booked out that day. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Saturday? Did you say I Saturday? I can't work on that day. Saturday, 1.30? No, I can't oh, do that. Sorry, one thirty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one thirty is going to be tough for me. Very, yeah, and so honestly, one thirty to four thirty, and then four thirty to set. And I'm I, basically one thirty to eight thirty. And how about one thirty? Does anything start at one thirty anymore? No. I like I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a get there early guy. I know. And I can't even go to the movie theater now. I know. Like at the I proper know. time because I know. if I get there I right when the movie's supposed to start, there's. <laughs> 30 minutes of something else. <laughs> so I true. Know, true. I know. I but know. But it's not even previews. It's like it's soda commercials yeah. and theater no, commercials. You're like, I know. I want to see it. Quizzes. I, at least if they're I just know. good trailers, Quizzes. I'm into it. But yeah, it's Maria all the, Menudo's the comes out and starts asking me a bunch of questions. I like, just, I don't want to answer your questions. I just I want to see the, the price of the ticket. Right, I know. So you don't have to sell me all this I so know. I can yeah, go and have the movie experience. Or I'm going to have to figure out how to time it. Oh, my goodness. Hey, no, just kick him. Hey, oh, I can't do it because he's wearing the crown on his If he didn't have that thing on his head, by God, I'd, <laughs> I'd <laughs> him. I'd stomp on him. Hey, oh, there he is. Hello, Shmi. Yeah, come here, buddy. He's old. He goes, you're making too Shmi. much noise. I went that? right into my cone and amplified in my ear. It's really wild. It, it, it's The cone is, 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 is the problem. Usually we don't have this... This much uh, interference, but the cone Throw is really some dirty projecting. clothes in there, man. <laughs> like a drum. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Dampen exactly. it a bit. Exactly right. 
Who are you going for football wise? Who are you uh, going for? I gotta say, man, I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. All right, I Baltimore. Think, yeah, he's. I, I like think, it. He's great. I like you know, it. But at this point, I I I don't want anybody to lose. You know, I've I reached know. that point yeah. in the season where yeah. I kind of. Yeah. I was yeah. I was even bummed because I I like CJ the uh, the the Browns? rookie quarterback oh, CJ Stroud, Stroud. Texans. Oh, oh Texans. he's great, dude. Yeah. He's one. He's a great. I mean, and he's a solid dude. I I really like him. He's got his head like really focused. That was tough for, to watch him. What about that Bills KC game, dude? With the missed, the missed. That I mean, was feel terrible field. for him. Oh, bad man. callback, man, for those guys. You know, they lost a Super Bowl because of that many years ago. Do you remember? I mean. I can tell when you when we were on Blossom, name, yeah. the early the early nineties. Remember the Bills went? Didn't they go three years in a row and they lost all three years? Yeah, I think they went to four. Right. Ultimately. Wow. They never oh won. Remember with Jim with Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly and Marv Levy was the. That's coach. right, Marv Levy. They what was it, Thurman Thomas or? Should be. He a, was the running back, I think, on the team. Anyway, but yeah, the a Bills were. Wasn't that the trophy catcher after. for the Yankees. Thurman Thomas was no, it? No, I, was I don't Thurman. know. <laughs> that was Thurman Munson. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I got Munson again, man. That would be cool. What, wasn't there this whole Super Bowl conspiracy you were telling? Oh yeah, about? there is a, a little bit of a this. conspiracy. Matt's got another conspiracy. Yeah, a little conspiracy. He's, our, he's basically like, yeah, he's Mel Gibson in conspiracy theory. Okay, actually, yeah. but good. You know, he's driving his cab, going, "Oh my god, I got these." No, go ahead. Say it, say it, say it. No, but it's um, true. I looked it up, and you're right. Yeah. So in the beginning of the year, they always release the the Super Bowl logo, and last year it was it just time. It just worked out that. The colors they chose were the colors of the team that went to the Super Bowl. And then this year they released the Super Bowl and again, the beginning of the season, and it was purple and red. So if Ravens and San Fran make it, everyone's kind of what going, what hell? is going yes, on if here? that's the case, people are like, what? How yeah. could they even do that? I know. I know. Is there a logarithm or something? I, I don't know. know. Logo right, rhythm? right. I don't, I, I, I don't know, but people are getting a little bit. And then there was a... But it's taken off. No, wait. And then, and then it's two weeks ago, it got it really took off because uh, there was a press release that NBC put out from the NFL uh, about the halftime show at the Baltimore Ravens San Francisco Super Bowl. And then it was quickly put taken down. They put it up and then they pulled it. But yes. now everybody's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is going on? Well, oh, man, guys yeah. are going to lose their houses next year betting on the... Uh, <laughs> oh my exactly. God. Oh, my God. Oh, exactly. I cracked the Wait, wait, wait. Code. And there you go. Yellow oh and purple. And it's there the you go. Wait, again and the... Uh, wait, you just nailed it. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, about yeah. the betting, by the way. You're 100% right. That's, is be. that purple or yeah. blue? I can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> It's more of a periwinkle. Damn it! Exactly. That's, that's exactly right. It's and it's the over under spread and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 everybody's just going nuts. It's a frenzy Could be the right Colts. now. Could be <laughs> Dallas. I don't know. Hey, how many uh, basement full of guys do you suppose there are talking about football right now? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of them. We just became one. Yes. Yes. We just became we a sports joined pod. the club. Yeah. All right. Well, look, real quick before we have to go, I have to just bring this up because I was always a huge Pink Panther fan. Oh, oh my gosh! And, and honestly, I was such a huge right. fan of your Pink Panther. Oh, thanks. So I yes. just wanted to give that a shout. How out. was that? Yeah. Thanks, I appreciate that. You know, it was it was a crazy experience. It was really it? was. Yeah. You know, like I I just been in New York. Uh, Which so, one was that? It was the. It was called Curse of the Pink Panther. Yes. Right, but it was the fourth one. No, or, no. Well, there was because there was Shot in the Dark. No, those those were the Return the, of the Pink Panther. Se Sellers, Sellers, and Blake did four together. Right, four. Okay. 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 And after the fourth one, you know, they right. said we're we're done with each other. They didn't want to work together again. <laughs> well, didn't didn't Sellers pass away during well, that's, one? that? What, what that, was opened, that? No, that opened the door for me. Okay. See, uh, they both had gone to the studio independently and said we want to make Pink Panther movies without each other. Wow. And oh, the studio gosh. was willing to roll the dice with Peter without Blake, hmm. but but they didn't want Blake to make one without Peter. And so wow. Blake had created it, so he was yes. unhappy, right? I'm sure. Of course. So Peter is going to make a Pink Panther film. I think it was going to call, be called The Romance of the Pink Panther. And they're about six or eight weeks away from hmm. starting principal photography, and he died. Right. And now the studio wow. has got I, a I Pink remember Panther that. announced for next summer. So they go back to Blake, and they go, hey. Buddy. <laughs> buddy, guess what happened? Uh, he's gone. and uh, wow. How'd you like to make us a Pink Panther? And Blake said, "Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll make you a Pink Panther movie." Wow! wow. And that opened the door for me. So I wow. get a call to go over and see Blake Edwards, and how is that? Uh, I, I, you know, I'm such a fan of his. I love yeah, his movies. That's cool, man. Shot in the and, Dark is one of my favorite movies. It's great. Ever. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. One of those I, I go in to meet him, and uh, 
I'm like nervous. I don't even know why I'm there, yeah. you know? And he's, uh, he says, oh man, I sit down, sit down. Julie and I love watching you and Richard on, on soap. We have such a good time. I love your work. And, uh, I got this idea for a pink Panther movie Jeez. and here's the idea. And he's Julie starts, Andrews, by the way. Yeah. 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 He starts know. telling me the idea. I does this and then he does this and then he does this and I'm listening and I'm listening and he's getting towards the end and I'm thinking, I wonder if there's anything for me in this. Wow. And he finishes. No way, dude. I'm telling you, man. He you had finished. no idea going into this meeting? Oh my goodness. No way. And he's pitching you the whole movie. Oh my oh god. He pitches me the whole movie and he finishes uh, pitching me the movie and he says, I think this would be a great role for you. Oh. Would you do it? And I was like, yeah, I would do it. I, I would I would do that. I would do it. I would do it. He right. said, you know, I'll tell you, I wish I could get B Dudley, but uh, I made Dudley a big star, and Dudley won't return my phone calls. He's booked for the next 10 years. Mm. Yeah, um, wow. But uh, So I go home, and my agents call me, and they go, uh, what happened with the meeting? I said, he offered me the lead in the Pink Panther movie. Oh, my goodness. And my agent goes, he did not. <laughs> oh, my he God. He did not. Dude, no. <laughs> what an like, agent. I'm like, you get out of here. <laughs> I go, yeah, he did. He said, no, no way. And oh, that's so funny. The next day he wanted me to come back. So I go back and I sit in the waiting room for a long wow. time. And finally he goes, uh, they go, Blake, I'll see you now. I walk in, Blake goes, oh, good. I'm glad you're here. Hey, put those glasses on over there. So I put on a pair of glasses. He starts laughing. And he calls Tony Adams, the producer, and he goes, look at Ted, look at Ted. And the two of them are laughing and laughing. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm just, I didn't even do anything. Oh, my God. And they go, okay, okay, okay. Leave the glasses. We'll be in touch. And a week later, they called. Oh, offered me my. six picture deal, man. Oh, no. To make a Pink Panther oh, movie every three years for the next 18 years. Yeah. Of course, the first one didn't work out. So, you know, we wow. didn't make any any more. But- Look, you know it. Uh, oh it, my god! It, there was a lot of funny sequences in it. I well, I, I loved. It. I left. I loved it. I yeah. thought it was. I thought, I thought it was, was a really, lot of funny stuff. I thought there's it was some, funny. There's Unreal. some lulls in it, but yeah, uh, but they, honestly, there were lulls in all the movies. Absolutely, yeah, there in were all of them. There were lulls. That's, well, you can't you can't be up here 100 percent of the time. That's no. how you get up there. I don't know. Maybe it was too soon after Peter. Maybe. I don't know because everybody maybe. that was people that, had two opinions. You know, this right. is such a great opportunity right. for you. Right, and like how. How could you do this? Right, right. Like I get how it. how could you take this part? You know, like I mean, and I like, I don't know not? if anybody was a bigger fan of Peter than me. Yeah, of course. I mean, side splitting everything oh, he did oh, was God. absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, and I'm was... I'm thinking I I can't possibly replace him. Right. But Blake had a take on a younger guy who was yeah. a black sheep who you know was the only member of his family to not be successful in law enforcement. I love it. Great. I love I, I love and the, the premise idea. seemed so so possible, yeah. you know, but uh we didn't go forward with that, which was which was really disappointing. Where but did you film that? In in Europe, man. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. We were we, all all over, right? What an we, experience. We were all we were in all the same locations where they'd wow. made all the great ones. I've worked with David Niven and Capucino or Jay Wagner. So yeah, dude, that is wow. and you were a young guy, right? Oh, I was, yeah, I wasn't 30 yet, man. I was, dude, oh, that is my gosh. Un Ted. Freaking believable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. But Holy then, you know, it, 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 it kind of came and went. I remember I went on, uh, on the Johnny Carson show to promo the movie and the studio hadn't given me a clip. And Johnny was like, do we have a clip? And I said, uh, no, no, I don't think there is one. And he says, oh, this is so exciting. Are you going to the premiere? And I remember just saying innocently, is there going to be one? Because I didn't know if there was going to be one oh or God. not. Oh, my God. And literally, oh the movie came and went. I had people, relatives in Chicago calling me going, hey, when's your movie coming out? Oh like, God. the next summer they're calling me. When's oh your movie coming out? I, said, yeah, I think you missed it. The DVD should be along in a oh couple of years. My you know? wow. Oh, so my it, God. So uh, it did not get much fanfare. It kind of came and went. Wow. That's um, wild. But I still had a great time, man. Oh, yeah, I spent man. five months in Europe. And, That's incredible. Wow. You know, working with a phenomenal people and Blake Edwards. And, you know, it was great. Wow. Yeah, was what great. year was that, Ted? Was it 1981? 81. Yeah. Holy cow. 81, I wow. think, into 82. I think that's right. Yeah. Who would know that just a short eight and a half years later, he'd be playing my dad on Blossom? Yeah, Isn't that really? crazy how quick that goes? It really does. That. How quick does that go, man? Dude, it goes so fast, guys. Bizarre, bro. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, 
It, it, it's crazy. It really and I does. think even in in your generation, and and in mine, so much, not not as much, but in your generation, like you were a full fledged adult yeah, at thirty. So true. Like you were not it, a it's, kid it's, at thirty. It's, it's weird. You were a man days, at thirty, yeah. and it it's was very approached true. that way. I remember. I mean, like <laughs> there are these memes that go around all the time on social media where. Like, you know, being, because they know the age that I am and stuff. So somehow the algorithm, like you were saying, will send you sh shit and it'll be, did you know that these people were your age when you're watching? Do you know that, um, um, uh, what's his face who played, <laughs> good, no, good, no, thanks, no, Joe. no, hold on, hold That's on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold what's his face, I always liked him, Carol, um, sure. on all yeah. the family, what's his, what's, who's the lead of that? Carol, Carol O'Connor, Carol O'Connor, yeah. you said Carol Burnett, so I had Carol Burnett in the brain, but it's Carol O'Connor, see, I am getting old, Carol O'Connor was 40 Six oh. when he started all in the family. Did you wow. see some of those? Yeah. He looks a hundred. He's a grouchy old man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Like and there's more guy. people. I mean, like, you know, the golden girls were like a lot of them were in their fifties. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just going And the grandmother yeah, was Estelle, the youngest was, one. Estelle, yeah. Estelle Getty was Estelle the Getty, youngest Getty, one. Yeah, they had to they had to age her up. Yes. Wow. Exactly. So you think about that. Yeah. And it's like anyway, there's this and if you look it up out there, it, it, all these people that were in their forties. And well, it's true. I mean, even even ancient. when you look, even like, when you go back even a, a little bit b bit further, you know, you, you all the guys that were like building New York City, they they looked like maybe they were in their forties and they were barely twenty years yeah, old. I know, you know. Yeah. No, it's 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 very different. So you had to, you were a do man. You remember, do you society remember early twenties? Well, they, they, they didn't have that. they didn't have moisturizers. It's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, all that you know, stuff, they man. The year, they wore their years a little harder. I think it was I a mindset too. Is that you were a full fledged man? You weren't allowed to say no. like, I don't know what I want to be yet. I'm only thirty. Oh you're like, no, thirty. I got. When you were 25, you were like, I got to figure this shit out. 100%. You know, and it's a whole different mindset. We've shifted 100%. now to like, you know, he's not baked yet. Oh, he's not fully baked. You know, you're 40, dude. You got to figure it out. Yeah, you're, 100%. You're, I mean, you know. That's very true. I, so, think, I think that's depression era thinking, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, if yeah. you were, if you had parents or, or yeah. grandparents that's that exactly lived right. through the depression. Yeah. Our grandparents did. Yep. You know, there was no time to like figure stuff out. It's nope. like you needed to get a job and you needed to be self-sufficient. You yep. needed to get on with your life. Yeah, and yep. yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah. and I don't know you have kids. I, yeah. I have them too. You know, perhaps yeah. I, you know, in an effort not to make kids like, you yeah. know, live through rejection or not have enough money or not have enough things to be, you know, in the group that they want to be with, you know, perhaps I've overindulged my kids. You know, yeah. I, 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 I just didn't, I mean, like I was a poor kid growing up, you yeah. know, some of the kids would go off to see a movie on Saturday morning. I didn't have a dime to go see the movie. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so geezer, doesn't it? No, but and it's... I didn't have a dime to go see. <laughs> no, but, but no, it's true. But it's true. It's very you know? just true. It's, it's true. Yeah, I absolutely. never wanted them to have that feeling of 100%. like, you know, yeah. with all good intentions, you know, there are consequences. I yeah. think each generation, I know that my, my parents, parents, my grandparents, yeah. you're right. World war two that, I mean, great depression, all these things, they in totally a good hearted you know, mindset wanted to make sure their kids didn't have to go through what they went through. Yep. But because of that, they became slightly more entitled. And I think the generation after them was like, I want to give my kids more than I had. It's all good intentioned. I'm guilty of it too. Right. You know, and yet what happens is they, they take, they, it's, it's not even a malicious thing, but they just, for, they don't have the, they don't have the perspective to understand and I find myself constantly explaining to young people, like, you realize how lucky we are to just be able to do this, to just have this. You realize what it takes to just be able to get this, you know? And to your point, it you was know, all good intention because we've all done it. You know, I, you know? I've been, I've been, I, the, the stuff, you know, flies around social media a lot. And one thing that kind of stuck with me lately is uh, how um, mental health has really taken a turn. Yeah. And how a lot of, the older generation is saying, you know, it's funny. It's, you know, it's not that we didn't, these problems weren't there in our lives. It's just, we didn't have the time to dwell on it. Right. right. And so there wasn't an option to be depressed. Right. We had to go out there, spend 12 to 16 hours. Bottle it all up. To make, no, to make sure. <laughs> Until one day you can't take it anymore. <laughs> and then you just end it. What? That was how they rolled. Wait a minute. I'm yeah. not ending me. Oh, I'm going yeah, to exactly. get you guys. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here goes Matt. I got a family, so I can't do that. Damn that shit. There. Well, well, you can. Down. There goes his football coach speech again. Yeah. 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 Just keep packing down that aggression. And then pop that can open and use it. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Hey. The Rangers. 
Rangers. Yeah, the Rangers. Rangers. <laughs> that is Matt. Oh God, I love Matt so funny. Matt, Where it comes Matt, from. Matt, 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 comes, Matt comes home the other day, and he's uh, like, he's already oh, no, We're in the car. He's in the car. And he's like, you know, man, you got to be careful, man. You can't road rage like you used to. People are crazy nowadays. They'll kill you. Hey, asshole! <laughs> I swear. I was like, so what? On cue, though. Yeah, literally, so on true. cue. He, was, oh, he wasn't even trying to be it funny. Was insane. Yeah, 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 yeah I was like, yeah, they're yeah, going to yeah. kill you. Learn how to drive. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like yeah. oh my God. Oh my God, God. did you guys see beef? No, no yes. I didn't see it. Yes. I didn't see it. It's very well it. done. Very well done. Right. Yeah. I really it's, enjoyed that. That's what it's it was all inspired. It's a love affair that's provoked by a road rage. Yeah. That yeah. incident. I gotta it's watch it. I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I really enjoy it. it. It's very, it very fun. clever, very well done. You can't believe where yeah. this yeah. thing goes. I know. I know. Every episode, I'm like, no, are yeah. you kidding? It keeps really? getting wilder I, I and crazier. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It's yeah. very, very clever. Supposedly, it was inspired. It, that it was, was a real, true, yeah, you really had a road rage incident. That was, the first episode was the real. Yeah. That's great. And then it was a love story. I know. I know, I love rage it. to love. That's normally how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Rage to love and then back to rage. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it goes love to rage. That's more the what it is. I love you and now I can't stand you. <laughs> you know, that happens a lot. Uh, <laughs> I've been trying to fix you now for the last 10 oh years. Oh. And you are still <laughs> you are exactly. still broken. Yep. You're a disaster. Well, wait a minute. I was some then I'm the same guy that you fell in love with. So <laughs> I know. Are you trying to change me? Because <laughs> I thought Very you true. liked me. Oh. Very true. <laughs> Go, so come true. over here. Let me show you how to skin this donut. Yeah, I'll skin this donut. Oh, you still circle. skinning donuts? Uh, no. Yeah. No. I'm giving up skinning donuts. He's the bionic donuts, man. man. He's the bionic man. He's, no, yeah. you know, I, I'm i trying to be healthier these days. Yeah. Man, yeah. You know? Me too. Cause, and cause... you golf a lot too, right? I golf, you know, I work out. I got a nice gym Good. at home. I got a Pilates reformer in there. Hey, and I'm on that thing. That's great, man. Trying to stay young. You know, they say you're only as old as your hip joints. You watch an old man walk. So true. Yep. You know, yep. and he's yep. narrowing the hips. And, yep. you know, you're trying to keep those joints moving. And Yeah, you got to. You, you got to. I, I keep seeing, again, a lot of doctors, they're out there saying, you know, even if you've, you know, indulged in things you shouldn't have in your life, It'll always supersede if if you're moving, if you're working out, if you're it, then yes. if you're not. It, that it, is that is the comorbidity aspect of things that can go really wrong. They can shorten your life as long as you keep active, you keep working out. Flexibility and it actually becomes more and more important the older you get. It mobility. Just does. Two things are going to win: gravity and the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right, it's true. You're right. What were you gonna say? Sorry. No, I, that's what it knows. That's what it is. It's it's damn. Yeah, it's flexibility and mobility. Right? Flexibility Range of motion. Mobility. That's what you yeah. want to yeah. yeah. keep that up. Got to keep, keep raging, man. If yeah. You gotta keep raging. You lose that rage. It'll man. keep you out of the grave. <laughs> gotta keep oh raging. God. If you rage, it keeps you out of the grave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Matt pulls up his chest. He's got a tattoo. Yeah. Rage. rage. Yeah. Matt does have next a... week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got inspired by that show we did with Ted. Look at this. This oh sort of comes up the neck a little. Oh my God. Ted's the coolest guy. He totally inspired me to get this. Oh no. Man, it's just rage, yeah. right? And then Ted Watts. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. I got his name on there. You're insane. With quotes. Yes. I love it. All right, guys. Can you believe this? That's it. That's the people it. always say, please do longer give, shows. Give us more. Give yep. us more. So, yep. so we, 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 we got beyond. more, everybody. We got more because we got somebody super special. Yeah, yes. For sure. Anyway, all right, everybody. We love you, Ted. Let, we love you. I Thanks love for being guys. here, love you, love, love you so much. Love you, man. Man. So, Ted Watts, everybody. Here on the Probably Love Pod. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you guys. Next week, same time on the Pod to Pod every Friday from here on out for as long as we can do this thing. Thanks for so as long much. God as bless. We both shall live. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God bless everybody. Have See a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Hey, what's up, everybody? The Lawrence, Lawrence Brothers, Brothers are here. here. Thank you so much for enjoying this week's episode of the Brotherly Love Pod. And if you want more of this show, Check out our premium feed on Supercast. That's right, where you'll see ad-free episodes, monthly AMAs, behind-the-scene content, and so much more. That's brotherlylove.supercast.com to join. Check out our link tree and subscribe on all platforms. We'll see you all next week. week.